Our next scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, uh, chapter 5, verses 22 to 26, and I'll be reading from the New International Reader's Version, um, starting with verse 22. But the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. There is no law against things of that kind. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their sinful desires to his cross. They don't want these things anymore. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become proud. Let us not make each other angry. Let us not want what belongs to others. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. As we took our first epic trip to St. Augustine on the first day of confirmation retreat, we went on a tour of the St. Augustine Lighthouse. And yes, all of us made it to the top. Thank you very much. This lighthouse was sorely needed as the sands around St. Augustine are constantly shifting. Boats would think that they knew where the channel was and they would carefully navigate into the St. Augustine Harbor only to find that where there once was a channel, two days ago there now was a sandbar. It was a tough, tough job. Lighthouse keeper must always keep the light shining, must make sure that everything is just right so that ships don't run aground, so that crews do not die at sea. You may know of the the wreck they're looking at now of a whole fleet of Spanish galleons that found their way into a storm and something like 17 ships were lost with all their treasure, but most of all with the treasure of the lives that were aboard. Personally, Christ is our lighthouse, as we just sang today. The world, however, may not know how to look at God, may not know what that light is that they're looking at. And that's why God made us into his church. The church shines like God's light into the world, showing people how to avoid the sandbars of sin and come into the harbor of eternal life. You heard in the song today, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. It is not just that God's light shines in the darkness that we find ourselves in, shines in other people's darkness that they find themselves in. It is that even when we go through darkness... We can shine God's light. Even when we shine in the darkness, we follow Jesus. This light we shine is not our own wisdom. It's not our own moral perfection or special knowledge. It's not that we somehow know how to decode the Bible and make sure all the nines and sevens and twelves and fours add up. It's not our own prosperity or our own American culture, nor our political opinions. It is the light of God that we reflect, a light that shows people God's grace, a light that shows people love and compassion in a world that is terribly lacking these things, a light that shows justice for the oppressed and the marginalized, a light that shows people a new creation, a new kingdom, a light that shows that there is no division but one common humanity united by faith, hope, and love. This is the picture we get from Acts in our scripture reading today. The believers shared everything. They prayed, they fasted, they sang together. New people were baptized every day into their fellowship as they followed Jesus, as they found this light in their life that they could follow, that they saw, that guided them around the sandbars and into eternal life. We can be as cynical as we want about how churches are nowadays, and no church is perfect. But it will never be possible, because these things, it will never be possible for us to be this way on our own. These things, the, 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 the harm, the sandbars, still exist today. And if we try to do to avoid them on our own, we'll be hopelessly lost, because we have no true guide of where we need to go. But avoiding sandbars is only possible as we collectively and individually draw closer to God. For with God, all things are possible. 
Paul reminds the church in Galatia as he writes his letter to the several churches in that region of the Roman Empire. He reminds them that the qualities of a church that is shining God's light brightly is what we call now the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, generosity, and self-control. He kind of adds a joke in there. Look, there's no law against this stuff. This is all good. All of us would agree that it is good when people act this way, whether they're Christian or not. But people need to know where the harbor is. They need to know where they need to sail in order to avoid the sandbars that stick all of us and strand all of us from time to time. When we, as the church, show people these fruits, when we act like that church in Acts, And not like a bunch of folks looking out for their own welfare and none others. People are able to avoid sandbars. They're able to find safe harbor in the arms of Christ. And part of what is so wonderful to watch is when when people do find that harbor... Sometimes we're restless, sometimes we think we see it along the way and we keep sailing down the shoreline. But as a church, the brighter our light shines, the better off the whole world will be. No matter how foggy it is outside, no matter how many clouds are on the horizon, lighthouses shine light. Lighthouses do this as a part of their being. The taller they are, the stronger they are, the better they are. For God is our lighthouse. As we follow him, we shine his light to the world and help people know where that safe harbor is. Today we have the pleasure of celebrating eight new commitments to Christ. And we found out we are just about at our Sunday limit. But that is great. Eight new commitments to Christ. Some of these have happened quickly. Some of these have been gradual as they've come along. Uh, But they didn't happen in a vacuum. They happened because all of us played a part. All of us helped to provide the good soil so that faith could begin to grow, so that someone felt like they were accepted and loved and empowered and began to think, well, maybe there is something to this whole Jesus thing. Maybe there's something to it for me and for, for my life. Maybe there's something for me. In Christianity. And so we celebrate with that today. We celebrate the fact that God's grace is so still, still so abundant. We celebrate the fact that God still works in our world and we can be encouraged ourselves. But more than that, we celebrate that this is the most important day in eight people's lives. And we thank God for that. Let me call out the names of our new confirmands and invite their sponsors and families to up to stand next to the banners out here at the front. Each of these banners was made during confirmation camp as a symbol of their faith, as um, a way for them to kind of tell you who they are and celebrate their newfound faith with you. Let me now call forward Aiden Dean, Ryan Elfring, Austin Green, Avery Hall, John Lanning, Jason Miller, Marin Miller, and Gia Mitchell. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. 
We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include those who come forward, who come forward today in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Aiden, Ryan, Austin, Avery, John, Jason, Marin, and Gia with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. As a reaffirmation of the tenets of our faith, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. On the third, third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Today we ask God's blessing on the waters of baptism as we prepare these new Christians to join the family of faith. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the stormy waters. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, light shining through water, to remind us that you would never again destroy the world in a flood. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the waters of the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan River to the land which you had promised them. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a mother's womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. I now call Aidan Daryl Dean to the altar rail with his family and sponsor. Christ's ambassador. How will you 
who sponsor hate and support and encourage it in his Christian life. Congregation, will you all, as a community of faith, build up Aiden and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Aiden Darrell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'll now call forward Ryan Joseph Elfring, his family, and his sponsors to the altar, sponsor to the altar rail. Frank, will you who sponsor Ryan support and encourage him in his Christian life? I will. Will you all, congregation, as a community of faith, build up Ryan and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. We will. Ryan Joseph, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us welcome our new brother in Christ. In your baptism, in your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. It's okay, we can say it to you over there too. <laughs> I now call forward Austin Jeffrey Green, his family, and his sponsor to the altar rail. Austin, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, 
nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Tom, will you who sponsor Austin support and encourage him in his Christian life? Congregation, will you all as a community of faith build up Austin and help him cultivate his faith with his prayer, with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Austin Jeffrey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you follow along with me on the bold words? Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward Avery Ryan Hall, her family and her sponsor to the altar rail. Avery, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Kathy, will you who sponsor Avery support and encourage her in her Christian life? Congregation, will you all as a community of faith build up Avery and help her cultivate her faith with your prayers your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Yeah. Avery Ryan, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us welcome our new sister in Christ. In your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptism vows today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward John Keith Lanning, his family, and his sponsor to the center altar rail. I present John Lanning for baptism and confirmation. John, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord 
in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Brian, will you who sponsor John support and encourage him in his Christian life? Congregation, will you all, as a community of faith, build up John and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? John Keith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Lay hands. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. <laughs> Baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward Jason Matthew Miller, his family, and his sponsor to the center altar rail. It's my pleasure to present Jason Miller for confirmation and baptism. Jason, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His, in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Galton, will you who sponsor Jason support and encourage him in his Christian life? Congregation, will you as a community of faith build up Jason and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Jason Matthew, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward Marin Lynn Miller, her family, and her sponsor to the altar rail. Marin, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, 
Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Deborah, will you who sponsor Marin support and encourage her in her Christian life? I will. Congregation, will you all as a community of faith build up Marin and help her cultivate her faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Marin Lynn, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. (laughs) It's the first set of jazz hands I've ever gotten. In your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward Gia, her family, and her sponsor, forward to the altar rail. That's great. Right, right here. I present Gia Elise Mitchell for baptism and confirmation. Got it. Gia, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassador in the world? Trisha, will you who sponsor Gia support and encourage her in her Christian life? Congregation, will you as a family of faith build up Gia and help her cultivate her faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Lean over. (laughs) It's just water. Gia Elise, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> this is the heaviest picture I gotta go. <laughs> and of the Son. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> May the Holy Spirit work within you that you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, following in the way that leads to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us welcome our new sister in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Confirmands, you have received the sacrament of baptism 
confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and through this, you are all part of the, of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. As members of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If you will, say we will. As a part of the United Methodist Church, you join a unique global branch of the great family tree of Christianity. You join the same church and take the same vows with other Methodists from the tropical jungles of the Philippines to the arid deserts of Angola. St. Paul's is one part of this great family you are joining today. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If you will, say, I will. Members of the, house, members of the household of God, I commend Aiden, Ryan, Austin, Avery, John, Jason, Marin, and Gia to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to thank you for being a part of this service today and being a part of the lives of these young people who are making this big, most important step of their lives today.